make that catch. Okay, Kornaski's back under center for a second and three. Nice move. Beach to midfield. He's got a blocker. Anderson there trying to make the tackle. Finally brought down from behind. And number 54 for Tyrone there to make the tackle. We don't have a number for him, but Scott Bossel there to make the tackle. I'll tell you, Beach just zigged and zagged his way through, used his block as well. That's another big play. Not Carmel, a team of big plays, Kelly. And you can see if you don't get in front of him, you're going to have some problems. Well, I think they're going to probably try to get the first down, if not go for the touchdown. Uh, they're not going to punt the football in this area of the field. Kornaski in an interesting formation out of the uh, shotgun. Plenty of time. Deep. Over the middle. Caught. Evans. Touchdown. A huge play on fourth and 20 from the 32-yard line. Out of shotgun formation. Take a look at it for Mount Carmel. We said Mount Carmel was a big play team, and this is certainly one of those big plays. He just gunned that ball to Evans. He had to thread the needle. Share there defensively tries to make a shirt tail tackle. Can't do it. Evans. Well, you know, Tyrone has a community that loves his football team, and these kids have given an awful lot to love this year. And I think the team unity is there, and the community unity is also there. All right, third and ten. Kornaski going over the top. Intended for Veach, intercepted by Matt Scherer. Breaks a tackle. Down the sidelines, looking for blockers. Taken out of bounds by Higgins. What a great play by Matt Scherer to come up with the interception. Not only come up with the interception, but as an offensive player, he knows what to do once he gets it. That's right, run the other direction. Again, this is probably the last thing that Mount Carmel wanted to do is throw an interception and give Tyrone an opportunity to score here before the half. Matt Scherer is in great position, catches the underthrown ball, and makes a good play running with the football after intercepting it. Let's see where they mark down uh, Tyrone as they take over possession. With 27 seconds left, inside the 30, they mark it at the 28. First and 10. Here come the Golden Eagles. Anderson, looking deep, going down the sideline. Oh, and it's always touchdown, Tyrone! Talk about emotion and momentum. Tyrone can capitalize on that every single time. What a great play by Tyrone to come back with the interception. First play, you take advantage of the momentum, and you go to the end zone, Coach. Okay, you will see that uh, Marcus Owens lines up as a slot back out here, comes all the way across the field, makes a big, big play, and he's wide open, a great throw into the end zone. Great catch again by Marcus Owens. This is a great play for Tyrone. This could change the entire momentum swing of this game. Proved to be... A, a run stopper or a, a drive stopper at least for the Tyrone Golden Eagles. And then, speaking of here's a great big, runs, here's Veach for Mount Carmel. Here's a big play here by Brett Veach of Mount Carmel. Veach, much like Art Marcus Owens, has the ability to take it, take it the distance on any given down. And here, and here again, again, right through the middle. Again, good moves inside, breaks it out. And here he breaks away here, gets behind his blockers. Again, good pursuit by Tyrone, kept this from being a touchdown all the way. And then the big play that we started to talk about just a couple of minutes ago, the touchdown on a fourth and 20 from the 32 out of shotgun formation. Okay, here you see Mount Carmel in the shotgun formation. They clear out the safety, looking for 27 coming across the middle, makes the catch in between the defenders, and takes it in for the touchdown. Threw it right over the linebacker, threw it exactly where it had to be. But, again... Big plays would prove to be a key in the first half. Mount Carmel gets greedy. Here with only 20-some seconds to go in the half, Mount Carmel again tries to get something else going on the scoreboard. Ball was intercepted by Matt Shar. Does a good job here breaking away and setting up even better field position for Tyrone with, I believe, 27 seconds to go in the half. That gave uh, Tyrone a chance to go right to the end zone with uh, just about 20 seconds left before halftime. Anderson looking deep. Okay, and he's looking all the way here for Marcus Owens. Marcus gives a good inside move, breaks it back to the outside here, and is wide open, makes a great catch in the end zone. That was a huge play now. Tyrone didn't kick the extra point through, but it still sends them to the locker room with some momentum, trailing 7-6. to six. We're going to get a chance to take a look at some of the first-half statistics, and really, the numbers bear out how equal these two teams are. Uh, Kelly Goodman just back from the Tyrone and Mount Carmel locker rooms try and give us a, a flavor of what was being said on both both sides uh, 
we would guess that Mount Carmel uh, is, is maybe a little bit back on its heels after the way that half ended. They certainly are. I'd have to give the edge to Tyrone just from listening to the emotion and hearing about the emotion in both uh, locker rooms. Mount Carmel, I heard one of their coaches yelling at their players, it's not that bad, you're up by one point. They acted like they were actually losing this game. I don't know the last time that Mount Carmel was ever winning by just one point mm -hmm. in a game except for at the kickoff. Tyrone, to them, this is old hat. Being down by one point is an advantage over some of the things that they've come back from in the last couple of weeks. I talked to Craig Starr, their injured tackle, who, you know, first of all, is dying to play today. <laughs> I think that he would love to be out there. But he said that um, John Franco just said, just keep doing everything you're doing. Do the little things right. Don't make mistakes. And hopefully they'll win this ball game. All right, the kickoff upcoming. But Coach Kelly makes an excellent point. Teams that have not had to struggle with victories all season long, when they get into a tight ball game, don't know what to do. And right now, that could be the situation that Mount Carmel's in because Tyrone's certainly been in his share of tight ball games. So Mount Carmel fans are probably feeling a little... Sandwich. Uh, yeah, a little sandwich. <laughs> That's a good word. Here's Beach on first and ten. Big carry. Into the secondary. Finally brought down. Owens there to make the initial tackle. With some help. Okay, here you, here you see a tailback playoff tag. Great block by the fullback. Again, Beach breaks into the secondary. And he's an outstanding runner, and you can see. All right, they've got to read their keys from the 49 now. First and 10. Now Carmel handing to Beach. Breaking it down inside the 40-yard line. Almost breaking it. If he could break one more tackle. I don't know what Mount Carmel talked about at the half, but it obviously involved winning the line of scrimmage. They're doing that right now. Jim, these plays start out with a great block by the fullback. You will see each play we had success with here on this uh, off-tackle play, the fullback kicked the end out and, ever, and gave Beach room to run. And you give him room to run, he's going to break a big play. Kelly, I don't think Tyrone's defense uh, takes too kindly to this kind of uh, activity. No, they do not. And another big running play for the Red Tornadoes as they go this time to Joe Costello trying to cross up the Golden Eagles defense, Kelly. And here you see a quick fullback trap. The guard pulls out on the end, makes a good block, and the fullback reads the block, keeps going to the outside, and, and gets a big gainer. Did we get a feel at halftime of what Hatch, a former head coach at Penn Cambria, out of the eye, look for Beach, and there it is. Cuts it outside to the 10, inside to the 9, finally brought down by Marcus Owens. Another big pickup by the Red Tornadoes. You know, if they were not with the momentum on their side at halftime, they certainly have it on their side okay. now. Here you will see that counter dive play again to the tailback. The guard pulls out, traps the end, and again, Beach gets an awful lot of room to run, and he has the ability to... This defense does not roll over. Second and goal from the three. Beach cuts it back inside for the touchdown. Followed his blockers, didn't see anything to the outside, saw the opening to the left, and goes into the end zone for the three-yard touchdown, and Mount Carmel puts six more on the board. Let's take a look at it. Again, here you see a power play here. Beach sees a little hole opening up to the left side, breaks it over there with great quickness, and scores the touchdown. With an important possession, they need to get some points on the board. Trailing 13-6, to six, they take over. First and 10 from their own 37. The call goes to Marcus Owens. Met. Almost immediately at the line of scrimmage, it's number 66, Joe Sicatano. And they're going to mark it down as no gain, second and ten. Okay, you see Tyrone has the same idea of running the football the second half of Mount Carmel. They're trying to run the football to the tight end side, but they're not having the success that Mount Carmel's had. From the Mount Carmel 45, is this four down territory yet, Coach? No, I don't believe it is yet. Right. Not, not with this much time. Not with this much time. Okay. That's always in motion. Anderson looking to the air. He has Owens open. Intercepted. Evans picking it off. He's got room. He's got blockers. He's got Green in front of him. He's got the end zone. Dave Evans with the touchdown. A miscommunication between Jared Anderson and Marcus Owens. Owens was open in the flat. Turned his head. Anderson throws it. Evans is there to pick it off, and that is a huge play for Mount Carmel. Take a look at it. Okay, what you're going to see here is the cornerback, Evans, just sits, reads the play, and the ball is thrown right to him. He has nothing but uh, green turf ahead of him. And with his outstanding speed, that no one can tie over going to catch him. He's one of those players that run the 4-4, and, and it's just one. 
from the Golden Eagles 37. Three receivers going out the drop late and buried is Wyland. Wow, that was not a well executed drop play. Joe Sicatano was expecting it, brings him down immediately. Okay, here you see Tyrone has four wide receivers. They, they try to spread the defense out, but uh, Sicatano from Mount Carmel, he didn't buy that. He was right in the backfield and made the play. They call it a loss of five, second and 15 now. From the 32. Okay, again, Tyrone's in the four receiver set. I think that's maybe the first time we've seen it today. Anderson in trouble and drop. Mount Carmel's defense smelling blood, smelling the pass, putting those ears back and rushing and not worrying too much about the run at all. Okay, right. They, they, this is a situation they pay no attention to the play action. They just reared their ears back and they went after the quarterback. Uh, great play here by number 30, the defensive end. Sean Jamin in with the tackle, and that's another loss, a big one of 11 yards this time. As good as maybe we thought they were at halftime. Little screen set up, the uh, flanker screen there set up across the middle as he uh, breaks in his... Uh, 41. 41 makes the tackle, and for uh, Tyrone, the catch is good for a couple of yards. Rosa. Yeah, do you this roll? is a situation you have to go for. Do you roll Anderson out to try and get by him some more time? I think you, you roll him out and you try to spread the defense out and try to find one of your backs like Marcus Owens. Straight drop, and he is dropped. Anderson took the five-step drop, had basically no chance. Maybe would have had a better chance had he rolled out, but that's going to turn the ball over to Mount Carmel with 3.49 left. And Mount Carmel now can basically uh, just run off a few plays, pick up a first down or two, and put this ball game away. Uh, this is a great situation for Mount Carmel. Hard as anyone. Absolutely. We're approaching three minutes left in the ball game. Beach, breaking it off, finds the sideline, got a block down inside the five. The first down pickup will stop the clock with 2.58 left. Okay, here's the... There's the counter dive here now with the guard pulling out, trapping the end again. Beach with a great speed, breaking to the outside, picking up a block downfield here by number 30, and, and taking the ball down to the five-yard line. Pretty good uh, amount about this title of football program. What are their chances, Coach? I know you'd like to say they can't get back here because if they get here again, it means that you're not here as the touchdown goes in for Mount Carmel. We'll talk a little bit more about the future of the Tyrone football program because right now Joe Costello has just put the exclamation point on a Mount Carmel touch on a Mount Carmel touchdown drive and a state football championship. Take one more look at it. Okay, what Mount Carmel does, they, they get Beach in motion to spread the defense out, run that quick toss to the fullback who he's got good speed and power himself, and he just powers it in for the touchdown. 25 to 6 now, Mount Carmel with the lead. A hard-fought football game and some big plays that really, really decided this. And Mount Carmel come out in the second half and, and really owned the second half. They owned the line of scrimmage. And you see here again is another look at the touchdown play. And Mount Carmel again with a quick pitch. Uh, the fullback number 41 just powers the football into the end zone. The chip game. That's the uh, the motto of the PIAA that uh, both teams are winners regardless of the outcome on the field. Uh, to say there is a loser when you get this far to accomplish all that you've had to accomplish to get this far, uh, there, there really is no loser. Hey, there are only two double-A teams in the state of Pennsylvania to get here. Tyrone is one of them. They didn't win it, unfortunately, but they've had an outstanding season, and they're still champions in our area. And you can hear the Red Tornado faithful count it down, and that's your ball game. Now Carmel wins the state double-A football championship with a convincing 25 to six victory over the Tyrone Golden Eagles. Congratulations to both teams. Thank you, Golden Eagles, for bringing us this far. It's been a tremendous story. We'd love to do it again. So bring us back again, if you will. We'll be back in just a minute. You're watching the PIAA State High School Football Championship game on WTAJ TV 10. <laughs> 